Okay, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about a new topic called one-way ANOVA. All right, and the purpose here of ANOVA right, is we want to compare multiple groups' means. Okay, we know how to deal with one sample of quantitative data where the mean is our parameter of interest. All right, we also know how to deal with two samples. All right, one sample we have to deal with the Z versus T ideas. Two sample, we have to think about, okay, should I treat this as match pair? Should I treat this as independent? If it's independent, right, we got the Z versus T thing again. All right, but that is for one or two groups. So what about three plus groups? All right, well, that's where ANOVA comes in. So when we're doing ANOVA, let's think about So when we're comparing several means, right, really what we'll be interested in is are all these groups means pretty much the same? Do they appear to be the same or is there some sort of difference? Okay, so when we're comparing multiple groups, our null hypothesis, if we're trying to see are is a group different or certain groups different, right, we'll have to assume in the null that they're all equal. All right, so the way we would write this, you know, you can't just write it all means are equal. But if you want to write all of them out, depending on how many groups you have, K being your number of groups, you know, we can write it out that way. All right, our alternative would be that not all are equal. Or again, you know, if we wanted to write it out, we could put a not equal to sign between all of those. Now notice our, our null is that they're equal, our alternative is that they're not equal. If we do end up rejecting the null, it's going to tell us that these means are not equal. Right, but it's not going to tell us exactly, okay, well, which mean is not equal, right? Is, is one of these just different from the other? Are a group of these, a collection of these, different from another collection of these, right? So once we decide whether we reject or fail to reject, or actually once we decide we're going to reject, right, we have to follow up and figure out, okay, what exactly is going on with the means that we're not equal, All right? Now the... When we've been working with means before, we worked with the Z or worked with the T, right? But turns out Z or T can't handle this, right? So we're going to need a new distribution, the F distribution. All right. So we know that these methods that we're going to be talking about are called analysis of variance, right? But maybe you're thinking, well, wait a minute. We, I thought we were talking about means. Like, why is this called analysis of variance? Okay, so, so really what this is looking at to decide if the means from all these different groups are equal, we're going to look at the dispersion or the variance of those means. Okay, so if, so here's a picture of, I have three groups, so here's, call it group one, group two, group three, all right, and then there are three means up here in green. Okay, so if you thought about the variance for each of these groups, so each of these groups of, of blue dots, right, the variance or the spread of those groups right, should be about the same as the spread of their sample means. All right, so if my means are about as spread out as my groups are on average, all right, well that's a pretty good indication that these means are about the same. All right, on the other hand, what if we have a different situation? All right, now I have three groups in red here, but these groups, their dispersion or their spread is much, much tighter. Now it turns out these groups have the same sample means as the previous, the previous picture over here on the left. All right, so their sample means are the same, but the dispersion, the spread, the variance of these three groups is much smaller. Okay, so remember a, a smaller spread, a smaller variance in those samples is going to make a difference in those means more apparent. Okay, so remember the, the standard deviation and the mean are all are relative to each other. Right, so if I have three groups like over here on the left, they all seem to have similar spreads, fairly larger spreads, 
All right, for three groups that are spread out that much, if the means turned out to be, you know, this one's a little below 24, 25, call it uh, 28, all right, those aren't so different if our groups are this spread out, all right? But what if our groups are pretty tight, like this over here on the right, all right? Even though these had the same sample means, right, the, the dispersion or the spread of those sample means is much larger relative to the dispersion of those samples. All right, so again, why, are, why is the method for assessing equality of means called analysis of variance? Well, because it's all about comparing the variance of those sample means to the variance of each of the individual samples on average. Okay, so we know whenever we're trying to use any sort of method, any sort of technique, we have certain assumptions that we need to, um, to fill. All right, and they're very similar to the regression assumptions that we've seen before. We need good sampling techniques, independent, all that stuff. Um, and actually, we do need each of our samples to be normally distributed. That, that's ideal. All right? If we have large samples, we can deviate from normality a little bit. But ideally, we'd have each sample coming from a normal distribution. All right? Now, the big thing that we got to look for here is we want each of these groups to have the same standard deviation. And we know when we say same standard deviation, it doesn't mean that each of them have to be exactly the same, right? And, and when we're working with samples, they're, they're not going to be exactly the same, right? But we need them to at least be similar, all right? Now, you can run tests for this, right? But we're, we haven't got into that yet, okay? But kind of a general rule of thumb to keep in mind is... We just want to make sure that, so we take our, our smallest group, we take our largest group, and we don't want the standard deviation of the largest to smallest group, that ratio there. We don't want any more than a, than a 2x um, ratio. All right. Now this middle assumption, I didn't, um, I didn't mention yet, All right. but if all of our groups have about the same sample sizes, all right, that makes things a little bit easier on us as well. All right, so our main tool for carrying out our calculations and carrying out this test right, is the ANOVA table. Now, you may have had some exposure to an ANOVA table in the context of regression before, right? and it has its uses there, right? but it looks generally like this. Now, this again, this may look familiar for regression. But sometimes, and especially in a regression context, this, uh, this row here where it says groups, sometimes you see that called model. All right? But I think it's nice to call it groups when we're, we're using it in a one-way ANOVA context. All right? But we've got, so our first column tells us the, the source of what we're looking for, what we're working with. The second column gives us our degrees of freedom. Third column, sum of squares. Right? Fourth column here, mean squared. Then we get our F-test statistic and our p-value. Ultimately, this is what we're working for. So all the work in this table ultimately just leads up to our p-value. Right? That's what we need to make our decision. Okay, so how do we fill out this table? Well, easiest place to start, go left to right. Degrees of freedom are usually pretty easy to deal with. Okay, so our group degrees of freedom, here's how we find that. We just take our number of groups, K, and subtract 1. All right, so that's easy enough. Total degrees of freedom, we just take N minus 1. Now notice this N, this is the overall number of individuals in your in your study here, your overall number of observations. All right, so that would be the n for all of those groups combined. All right, then our degrees of freedom error. Well, we know in an ANOVA table, right, everything here groups plus error must be equal to the total. All right, so so actually my degrees of freedom total, if it's n minus one, the easiest way to find degrees of freedom error 
we know it's degrees of freedom total minus degrees of freedom group. N minus 1 minus K minus 1 leaves us with N minus K. All right, so keep moving towards the right. To keep moving right, the next column we come to is our sum of squares. So the calculation for the sum of squares is, is pretty involved, can be kind of daunting, especially you know with, with multiple groups, large sample sizes. Okay, so I mean this is this is where we just leave it up to technology, right? Leave it up to your to your software of choice. Um, but just a little bit about them we see that the sum of squares group is basically calculated by looking at the mean of that group minus the overall mean weighted by the sample size of that group. Right? Then I sum that up overall groups. Sum of squared error, I'm weighting by my degrees of freedom the variance of each of those groups. Right? Then we know sum of squares total is just the sum of the two. Again, um, you don't really want to find yourself in a situation where you have to calculate all these on pencil and paper. So we'll, we'll uh, lean on software for that. But in a situation where you were trying to fill this out by hand, you know, if you had two out of the three pieces of that column, you could easily solve for the other one. right? Because we know SSG plus SSE is equal to SST. All right, so moving on to our next column, the mean square. All right, so how do we find mean squared groups? Well, that's just take your sum of squared group divide by your degrees of freedom for the group. Mean squared error, sum of squared error divided by degrees of freedom for the error row. All right, next step, now we can find our test statistic. Our test statistic is the ratio of mean squared group to mean squared error. Right? Remember, we, we talked about how we're, we're essentially comparing the mean or the dispersion, the spread of the sample means to the dispersion or spread of each of the samples. Right? So that's essentially what our F-test statistic does. Right? Then from there, we can either go to the table or use technology with that test statistic to find the p-value. So how does our F-distribution function? Right. Well, you may have seen the F distribution before or not, but something kind of um, unique to the F distribution is it does have two degrees of freedom. Right, and we know that because remember how we calculated our our um, remember we calculated our test statistic. Right, we have a group degrees of freedom. We have an error degrees of freedom. All right, so our F distribution has a numerator and denominator degrees of freedom. It is a, a right skewed distribution. It kind of looks like the chi squared a little bit. All right, the, the test statistic in words looks like this. Okay, so we could kind of um, interpret that as if there's less variability in the samples, right, then F is our test statistic here is going to be pretty small. If there's more variability within the samples, our test statistic is going to be large. All right, so these are all the basic concepts of our one-way ANOVA. We'll, we'll check out some examples in subsequent videos. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.